Okay, everybody. Um, Planet of the Humans. Um, apparently, there is this uh, Q and A uh, with Michael Moore, Jeff Gibbs, and Ozzy Zenner, and it already streamed on April twenty 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 second. So uh, we're a little bit late to the party here, but that's okay. Uh, given my current uh, health predicament, um, you know. Let's see. Let's see what they have to say about nuclear energy. So, my friend Carl Alex Pauls, who's also a patron of uh, of this page, has uh, given me the timestamp at which point the whole um, nuclear pit starts. So let's let's have a look. Let's see what they have to say about nuclear. Okay, here we go. Early in the morning, and into my mind pop the ending of the film uh, yeah my husband and i agree with a guy at the beginning of the film who says uh we might only have 10 years to live oh, oh boy no <laughs> well even, even even though i i i do think that climate change is a big issue i uh, don't think that it's going to you know make our uh, hats explode when we uh and we fail to address it, but it's going to make the planet less habitable, you know, by the decade. So, uh, yeah, it's not, not going to take, it's not going to go that fast. Hopefully a bit longer than that, but yeah, it's on and on like this, guys. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's amazing, and I encourage people who've watched it and are listening and watching us right now to please tell your, uh, your friends and family uh, to watch this on my youtube channel um it's um it doesn't cost it let's see if the quality gets some, some some better because this is this is like oh it's only 720p and that's on michael morris channel he's uh he's uh he knows documentaries and stuff so apparently i don't know anything it's it's our gift to you um and um, not, there's probably not been a better time uh, to watch it. There, um, I have another question here um, um, from YouTube where uh, this person asks, uh, what about nuclear power? Here we go, here we go. The magic word has been uh, dropped. Let's, uh, see. Let's see why it wasn't featured in Planet of the Humans. Um, what are your feelings about that? Isn't that clean energy? Uh, <laughs> Uh, well, I've been, I was involved in the anti-nuclear movement back in the 70s when it was first beginning. Um, and I think you guys were involved too. And we've had a lot of feelings about this over the years to um, try and end this madness. But I, you, I think you guys probably have your own thoughts about it. Try and end this madness? What madness? Nuclear power? Or, I mean, this is cagey. Go ahead. Oh boy. Well, I mean, my experience with nuclear comes from my research, primarily uh, at Hanford uh, and the nuclear waste containment facility out there. I mean, there's a, you know, it started because I was really interested in this uh, tank at Hanford that has been storing nuclear waste since uh, the development of early nuclear weapons uh, and energy. They, come, they grew together. It's very difficult to, to dis, uh, disassemble uh, the histories. Um, and it's really frightening to think that, that back then they were throwing, you know, the practices were much different than today, but they were throwing a lot of these uh, elements into slurry ponds and, and, and these giant, uh, they've then combined them into uh, larger and larger vessels, which are uh, at Hanford uh, out on the west uh, right now. And uh, they're very uncontrollable. They, 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 they're still alive. They're very much alive and they rock back and forth and they break out of their enclosures. And it's really uh, the kind of stuff of science fiction almost, but it's actually really happening. And uh, so I'm always having in my mind the, the dangers and the unanticipated consequences. That Wait a second. Uh, all right. There's so much to break down here. Um, first of all, Hanford. Um so the, the the trick here is, he basically says, well, the nuclear industry and the weapons industry are basically intertwined. There's there's no way of you know telling where one ends and the other begins, and vice versa. And 
then he immediately segues into Hanford and starts talking about the stuff, you know, that is locked up there in these uh, slurries, you know, which contain radioactive isotopes, uh, radioactive atoms. And um, that it's hard and it's rocking and it's alive and uh, this is this is this is not this is not the way to address this these issues. I mean, this is just making bamboozling people with, you know, telling them that it that it is strange stuff that we don't really know how to handle. And but but there's a there's a couple of these sites in the world. We're talking about Hanford. We're talking about Sellafield, and we're probably talking about La Hague in France. And that's basically it. Perhaps there's some place in Russia I don't know of at the at the top of my head, but those are the three uh, weapons handling places or places where they handle uh, rest products from plutonium production, basically, or where they store uh, spent nuclear fuel or where they reprocess spent nuclear fuel. In any case, this narrative that he is presenting to us so far is ill-conducive to the understanding of nuclear power, civilian nuclear power, the way it is delivered to your wall socket. Hanford has almost nothing to do with it. Nothing. You know, tangentially, or if you want to say, well, from a development standpoint, when we were developing nuclear power, Hanford had something to do with it. But if you look, for instance, at, uh, let me say, for instance, Indian Point, one of the power plants that recently got, got closed, has nothing to do with Hanford. And all the waste that comes out of Indian Point is not sludge or slurry. It's solid pallets encased in metal tubes encased in steel cylinders, encased in concrete cylinders. So, I mean, this is, this is, this is already wrong. Um, uh, from the development of, of nuclear power. But then, and maybe you can talk more about this, Jeff, but, you know, nuclear power is essentially, when you build these facilities, they are enormously expensive to build. And the reason is because there's so many materials and energy and... This is this is even worse. This is even worse. So there's so much energy and materials and you know required to build this massive nuclear power plant. Well, let me let me tell you something, Aussie. Um, and I understand that you've been uh, criticizing renewables in this Planet of the Humans film. So basically this gives you the freedom to criticize everything. So my question to you is what else do you want? You don't want nuclear, you don't want wind, you don't want solar, you don't want hydro probably, and you don't want biomass. So basically you're a coal, oil, and gas proponent. If I take, you know, the gist of this planet of the humans film literally uh, secondly just for comparison's sake a nuclear power plant does not take does not is less material materials intensive than the equivalent annual generation Capacity, I'm talking about actual energy output, not capacity in a sense of gigawatts or megawatts or whatever, than wind and solar. In fact, it uses materials 11 to 15 times more efficiently than wind and almost 30 times better than solar. So this is just a non-starter. This is an absolute non-starter. If you want the most 
efficient source of energy. I'm not talking about fuel efficiency. I'm not talking about any of that, that stuff. Just putting materials to good use, pouring concrete, you know, installing uh, steel bars, and I, I don't know what. I'm not a construction specialist, so please don't 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 <laughs> punish me on getting some of the details wrong here. But I've I've calculated the mass required to build the mass of materials required to build a nuclear power plant, and compared that to the mass required to build equivalent. Uh, in wind and in solar, and wind and solar are are orders of magnitude off. So this is this is bullshit, Ozzy. This is absolute bullshit. And concrete and steel that goes into building them, and then uh, it takes an enormous number of PhD scientists to build them. Wait a second. No, this is not true. It does not take PhD scientists to build a nuclear power plant. What what other bullcrap is this? I mean, a nuclear power plant. Sure, you need a lot of experienced people, people who have uh, uh, higher degrees in uh, construction and such, because you need to you need to make sure that everything is within margin, and you know you have a very very small margin of error, and people have to look at it. And and sure, I mean. Yeah, but most of the people building a nuclear power plant are actually regular construction workers. <laughs> Pipe benders, concrete pourers, you know. <laughs> this is just... And actually, but here's the thing. This, is, this will be a, a traveling circus. Just like you have a traveling circus with renewables. But the only difference is, and okay... The, the 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 traveling circus of the nuclear construction crew so if we may call it that is higher it has had better education than the ones who are building the solar power plants now it's debatable whether one is better than the other but this is a total non sequitur why shouldn't we do nuclear if it takes higher if if you need people with higher educations i mean does it make any sense? Does it make any sense? Don't don't we want people to have better education? I don't know. I don't know. And then run them for their entire lives. PhDs do not have a zero carbon or zero energy impact on, on the planet. Uh Wait a second. You don't need... Yes, there are some PhDs running a nuclear power plant. I think so, but... But most of these people have had a higher education, but don't necessarily need a PhD to run a nuclear power plant. I mean, I know people who run nuclear power plants who don't have PhDs, and they are actually in the control rooms. So, I don't know. It's a bit strange, this. Uh, it takes an enormous amount of, uh, uh, of infrastructure to support a society that educates people and, and so when you start going back into the system and looking at the overall footprint of nuclear, uh, it, it starts to look a lot different. And Jeff, you can talk more about that too. Uh, this, is, this is crazy. I mean, this is crazy. We don't want educated people because educated people, they cost us CO2. <laughs> this is crazy. You know, we just thought there were so many issues with nuclear that it deserved its own movie or book or... Uh, treatment somehow and that we couldn't you know we didn't want to just bring it up and and throw it away but please don't please don't jeff please don't give it its own movie i mean <laughs> well it's going to give me work i thank you for that i mean this is ammo for me this is this is a, a means to give me more more work i can i can respond to this bull crap Okay, let's 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 listen to what Jeff has to say. Many of the same issues that that uh, go into um, our concerns about renewables. You know, concrete is, I think, the third largest source of CO two on the planet. It's the main ingredient of a nuclear plant. Steel takes a tremendous tremendous amount of energy. Tremendous. I'm not English, but please pronounce pronunciate your own language correctly, please. Uranium combined 
the environmental destruction with mining uranium. Okay. <laughs> these are, these are co constantly regurgitated arguments that have been debunked over and over again. If you combine all the materials needed to build, let's say, 100 gigawatts of nuclear, and let's add to that a smidgen, a smidgen of uranium mining. I mean, we can unearth maybe 6, maybe 10 million tons of uranium from the crust of the Earth, and then we still have 6 billion tons of uranium floating around in the ocean or suspended in the ocean. And, I mean, we're talking about 6 billion tons that we know of right now that we can extract from the crust of the Earth. So not necessarily the crust, but on land, right? And 6 million tons... So if you look at it, at one windmill, one, a windmill is about 600 tons of material, 600 tons. So the jump from 600 to 6 million is 10,000, right? So you need 10,000. Once you build 10,000 windmills, you have already extracted more materials than you would ever extract uranium from the earth so and here's the thing we are never going to make it with 10,000 10,000 windmills I mean we've already got a couple hundred thousand windmills already so that's just laughable Jeff that's completely laughable and as I said before and I will put uh, references down below so you can check my claims but nuclear power yes it uses concrete and yes it uses steel and yes a nuclear power plant looks big but the output is enormous whereas the output of a windmill or a solar panel is minute so we have a difference in scale that is almost exponential and that's not even considering the fact that if we start to reusing uranium, spent nuclear fuel or depleted uranium, we can power the earth for tens of thousands of years, at least, at least, using just nuclear power. So these arguments are just asinine. Um, and then the story of like, oh, it's going to get better. There's a new generation. We constantly hear, oh, well, there's thor thorium reactors. Well, I don't... The pie in the sky argument. The pie in the sky argument. This is an argument from ignorance. You don't know what you're talking about, Jeff. I don't believe there's ever been a real thorium reactor working. That's not true. Thorium has been used before. So basically, we have had thorium reactors shipping port and some to some degree was a thorium reactor uh, but who cares about thorium at this moment i understand that there's loads of people out there who love thorium and who think that it is the the new the new fuel for the future and uh, I, I i simply acknowledge it as a, a, a fertile material that can be used in nuclear reactors india is actually working on thorium reactors there are some startups working on thorium reactors. There's molten salt reactors. Molten salt reactors have precedents already existed. Um, so there's no, there's no pie in the sky discussion here. Uh, this existed on planet Earth, but yet thorium is going to save us. Um, so it's very much a very similar story to um, the illusion of, of clean energy and and again, what are we going to do with more nuclear power? Um, you know, we're going to do the same things we're doing now unless we end this myth that infinite growth on a finite planet is possible. Okay. Um, so this, this, this becomes a very misanthropic argument here. He, he simply doesn't want any clean energy. He doesn't want any clean energy. In fact, he doesn't want any energy at all. All energy is bad. Coal, gas, oil 
Obviously, they are bad because they cause global warming. Wind and solar are bad because they just cause more of these burning. Biomass is bad because we kill trees for it. So there is no answer. Basically, what he wants us is to go extinct. That's the only other option that there is left. And here's the thing. I do agree that we have to find a balanced state in which we stop consuming resources from the planet at a rate that is unsustainable. I do agree with that. Um, does the West need to grow any further? No, I don't think so. I think that the West can find a stable state. Yes, we can still have some new stuff. Yes, we can still do new things. But I, I, I believe that recycling is perhaps a better route to go forward. Build more durable stuff. I mean... Uh, I, I, I own a television that is now 10 years old. I would love to keep using it for another 10 years or maybe 20. If it still, if it still works by then. But that's not how our society is built right now. Our society is built around building newer stuff, better stuff all the time. And replacing the old with the new. And the... Uh, to some degree, that is, that is absolutely great. That's absolutely good. I love progress. But I, I, I do agree that we have to limit, you know, the, the, the turnover between old products and new products and old products and new products. But that's for the West. That's something for the West. But for the people who have not yet have seen any growth, or only a miserable portion of growth, people who only have smartphones and perhaps a light in the evening. And, you know, maybe they have a propane cooking stove or, you know, maybe they use kerosene lamps. Uh, these people deserve to be uplifted. You know, they have a right to good sanitation they have a right to stuff you know uh, simple stuff like soap stuff to disinfect their appliances and their forks and and and, and whatever they have a right to clean water they have a, a right to sewage pipe that they can attach to not just throwing all their shit out into some creek somewhere or you know, on a, in, in, a, in a ditch running along the street. They have a right to, to, to a decent hospital, a doctor if they need it, which is also a PhD level person. Um, all that stuff. There's, you know, there's billions of people out there and we're not even talking about those who haven't been born yet that need that stuff. How are we going to stop population growth? It's only going to happen if we give these people enough stuff and enough services so that they can lead decent lives. And it's not going to happen with less energy, no more growth. This is just this is just anti-humanistic bullcrap what they're spewing here. And sustainable and survivable. And the only reason we think that it's survivable is because basically this growth machine has served us very well. Maybe we're doing better than we were in the 60s. Oh, in the, yeah, well, in the 60s and the 70s, yes. I grant you that uh, we are probably, we gained about five or 10 years in life expectancy. Instead of growing up to 85, now we can turn 90 or 95. Big fucking deal. But growth has also propelled us into an age where we live beyond 30. Dying of the teeth or dying of malnutrition or dying of diarrhea or dying from the effects of malaria or dying from whatever fucking disease there is out there in the poor countries or 
getting our heads cut off by some fucking tribe that lives on the other side of the island and wants our stuff. I mean, come on. This is... Yes, you sit in your ivory tower. You are a rich, white fuck living in America who has all the stuff he needs. You can, you can say, oh, sure, we don't need all this stuff anymore because we already made it. There's, there's billions of people out there that have not made it. And is it, is it moral or, or ethical for you to say, well, we can't have growth? Because this really rattles my bones, people. This really, absolutely, this cuts the cake. This is so misanthropic. I hate it. In the 70s and 80s and 90s, we have more stuff. We have more goodies. We have more people consuming more. And we confuse that with how the planet's doing. By every measure, things across the living planet, soil depletion, fish gone in the ocean, wildlife, the, the ocean's filling with toxins, and the air is now filled with microplastics. The air? The air is now filled with microplastics? I believe that the water system is filled with microplastics, yes. The air, yes. In some cases, it will contain soot particles, or it would contain stuff that came out of a chimney at a coal-fired power plant. If you have a kerosene lamp, there's shit in the air. If you have, uh, if you're burning dung for cooking the water or cooking food, sure, you have particulates in the air, but that's not microplastics. What's that going to do for us? The air. The air. The air is filled with. I don't remember the exact numbers, but there's microplastics. Um, you know, in all the air that we breathe. You know, Mount Everest, you cannot drink the water from the snow on Mount Everest because it wouldn't meet water quality standards because there's so much pollution on Mount Everest. The small number of people. What kind of pollution? Be more specific, Jeff. Before you make a, another film, please research what you, whatever you're seeing. And I got this, I, I got a comment from a viewer the other day. I stated wrongly that brazil doesn't have any oil reserves to speak of which is not true it's the 15th oil it's the it's ranked 15th in terms of uh, oil reserves on the planet so i owe up to my mistakes and i try to learn from my mistakes and i would suggest to jeff that he will do the same because he simply doesn't have the perspective needed to tell you all these things. It Planet of the Human Planet of the Humans is an excellent expose. It tells us that the green movement is basically not doing what it what it has promised. And especially the leaders of the green movement, they're just selling us crap all over the place. The expose part of Planet of the Humans is excellent. But the misanthropic idea that we can't have clean energy, that we cannot have any growth, that we must stop everything, not offering any solutions except stop having children, stop consuming. It's just not enough. It's just not good enough. It's just, ah. Well, the scientists at the South Pole have created pollution problems in the South Pole. And by the way, our fishing trawlers are circling there to get the last schools of fish. And there's still whaling going on with the, la you know, with, with the remaining whales that we have. Yeah, I agree. We have to stop whaling. It's bullshit. Leave those animals alone. So th this, is what, this is where I get my hope from, too, is because once we tune into the fact, it's not about more of anything, nuclear, solar, or whatever. It's getting a grip on ourselves. This is just not, a, this is, you don't understand the slightest bit about why we need more wind or solar or nuclear. You don't understand it. Climate change is primarily due to carbon emissions. Carbon emissions come from coal, oil, and gas. We use it in power plants. We use it in industry. We use it in transportation. Obviously. All of this has to do with how we consume things, whether we consume electricity, whether we consume goods, 
or whether we consume services. As long as we keep consuming these things, we are going to burn coal, oil, and gas. Would you not rather have a whole fleet of nuclear reactors not putting any carbon emissions into the air while perhaps by some miracle reducing the number of services, goods, and electricity and other energy stuff that we use? But the point is, just doing this less you know, just just using less co just using less services and etc. Doesn't make the coal, oil, and gas go away straight away. You have to have a replacement for it. You need to replace it, even if we can, even if we can drop our energy consumption by half. Let's be incredibly optimistic. Let's suppose that we take the message of the planet of the humans to heart and we drop our energy consumption by half in the West. I'm not talking about developing countries. Then we would still be emitting loads and loads and loads of carbon emissions. So this is not a solution. This is just bullcrap. You don't understand energy. You don't understand mankind. You don't understand what we do and how that costs energy, why it costs energy. Right. Um, I have another question here. Your cameras and computers that are used for editing your film do the same damage and require the same materials uh, that solar panels use to make solar panels. Um, how do you answer something like that? I'm That's a fantastic point. It's absolutely true. And so why am I living in a world where I get one camera, then another, then a third? Your crew has their cameras. You know, you know what? Screw it. I'm not going to I'm not going to listen to the rest of this this stuff. Um, I've already heard enough. Uh, they don't like nuclear because they don't understand it. But they also don't like nuclear because it means that we keep consuming electricity or keep consuming energy, which is we just misinformed to the max. Because whatever we do, right here, I have a wonderful glass of water. This water came from a tap. So my house is hooked up to a water network. All the houses in the Netherlands are hooked up to a water network. We have several different energy factors incorporated in this glass. Just a just a tiny tip of the iceberg, Jeff. Because I'm not I'm not talking to you, my viewer. I'm talking to Jeff. Um, first, you need the raw materials to make the glass. Let's assume that at the at the minimum. Everybody on the planet needs one glass, one glass. I think that's a reasonable assumption. You need the raw materials for the glass, which costs energy to get. Right now, this energy mainly comes from oil derivatives, diesel, probably. Then all that stuff gets transported by a truck to some kind of a facility uh, where the glass where the glass is ultimately made then the glass has to be put in a box and this box is then transported to a distribution facility which costs you know some degree of energy I mean we need to build that we need to power it and then it goes to the shop and you probably take your car and go and get the glass. So everybody in the world is going to get its glass. Next, we need water. This water has been extracted from a river and then purified. The extraction costs electricity. The purification costs electricity. 
Next, the water is stored somewhere. And next, the water is pumped into the water system. Costs electricity. Then it has to come out of, you know, you know, your own faucet, which has been created with raw materials, the whole shebang again. So, so here's the thing. I'm going to take a swig because my mouth is getting dry. I love good water. Thank you for not giving me diarrhea like you would have given me when I was like in, uh, let's say, uh, Niger or Chad or perhaps certain areas of Egypt, or Kenya, or Mozambique. And next, we like to have clothes. Now, I have some fancy clothes with a sticker on it. But let's say that you just want a, 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 you know, a simple t-shirt. Everybody deserves to own a t-shirt, just one t-shirt. We need to have all the cotton. Cotton grows in a tree, which is free. Hooray, that's awesome. But if you want to do it on a larger scale, you have to irrigate your trees, you know, and so on and so further and so on. And we can and we keep, can keep on going at infinitum. Even the most rudimentary level of existence of man costs energy. I would like to have a dentist not having to die from my teeth at age 35. I would like to have a doctor who will help me live past 50. I would like to have a dietitian. I, I, I swear I need one. I'm sorry. I know I need to eat less, but I have a mind disease. I have a chronic depressive disorder and this disorder makes me eat stuff involuntarily so i also need a psychiatrist and i need the medication to stay alive literally because otherwise i would become suicidal perhaps so this whole notion they are not that that energy whatever energy consumption is bad is just asinine it offers no solutions and hereby I say unto you, Jeff Gibbs, Ozzy Zenner, and Michael Moore, your film is bullcrap. And why is your film bullcrap? Because, because even though it's a good expose, the reasoning for the reasons for making the film are simply uh, out of touch with reality. And that's it. Thank you all for watching. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.